Okay. Uh, how are you, Dr. Stanley? I'm great. Thank you for inviting me, John. You're welcome. Um, now, everyone knows that you're the superintendent of the Joel Barlow High School. Uh, so what drew you to come, come here to Region 9? Um, and let me just clarify that for a minute, yeah. because not only do I um, oversee the high school, um, but also all schools in Easton and in Reading, mm -hmm. um, which is why we call ER9, which is the Reading and Region 9, so we have five schools yeah. um, and, the, and the central office. What drew me? Um, well, I knew your former superintendent, Dr. Schwarzbender. Um, he was a, a, a very close colleague of mine and had a lot of respect for him. He um, actually recently told me about his position and encouraged me in going to apply. So I did my homework and I found out that, um, you know, first of all, these are, these are two beautiful communities mm -hmm. where people really care about the quality of education. Um, I knew about Joel Barlow High School. students, very serious teachers, and um, you know, dedicated teachers and uh, support staff, and um, um, I came down for, um, for an interview, just a very informal conversation with one of the six, seven board members, mm -hmm. and that's how the process all began. All right. Um, what is, now that you've had this job for several months now, what is your favorite part of the job? What do you think my favorite part of the job is? Probably, um, I, from my perspective, I would say uh, when you get the chance to interact with this with students as, as to the degree that you can, and to also get feedback from teachers, that that's how I probably would interpret uh, your favorite part of the job. Precisely, that's very insightful of you, and it means a lot to me that you um, observe that in me, because. Um, I can't, I, I can't do this job and I don't want to do this job without having strong connections with people because I make my decisions based on students. Mm -hmm. And when I think about what, the direction in which I want to move or ask people to work with me, it's all linked to how will this help students be more successful, both academically and overall. So I can't do that unless I'm watching kids watching them learn, talking to them, and, and getting feedback from them, which I, I yeah. have been doing in the past. Um, because there are things that I haven't thought of that um, will help me um, make a better decision because I'm, 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 I'm better prepared to mm -hmm. make that decision. And, and you know, the same thing goes with, with teachers and also your support staff, you know, with yourself, Pearl, yeah. down the hallway. I love seeing Pearl, you know, yeah. um, because she's so upbeat. <laughs> and I draw my energy from people like that. Uh, and the part you, you don't see is my interaction with parents. You know, I spent a lot of time um, at, at PTA meetings and evening meetings and um, concerts and, and football games and because I see parents there as well, right. and uh, they help me a lot. Right. Um, <coughs> in sort of a follow-up question to um, that, what do you want students to take away from their experience here at Joel Barlow? And, and Let's, let's maybe widen that to all across all five schools. What do you want students to take away from their education? That's a good question. Thank you. Um, the first is I want them to um, feel successful and confident in, in what they've done. Um, I want them to love learning. Mm -hmm. I want them to be eager to learn new things. So wherever they go, whether they go right into a career or to college or military, I want them to, to, to seek out information they don't know and make their own direction. Um, and um, I want them to be good people. You know, I know that, that, that there's a lot of talk about integrity yeah. and the posters and so forth, and I know that's important, but um, I want them to understand that how they treat each other, how they treat themselves, um, and how they treat their school, you know, those, those are all very important things. We have a new mission statement that was developed, and when I was, you know, talking to people about that, and it talks about academic excellence mm -hmm. with personal and social integrity. Mm -hmm. So, so for so for the school, it's not just the academic aspect that Absolutely you not. you want to focus on social, physical, and mental well-being to make that. But it's also their integrity. Mm -hmm. It's also their integrity, and and it's measuring your your personal best, whether it be academic or social, that, you know, I started the year here, mm -hmm. and, and 
this is where I am right now, and, and I've made improvement, and I'm really proud of myself. Whether I meet anyone else's benchmark, that shouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've worked hard. <coughs> you probably, you know, heard, or you will hear me talk about effort. It's all about effort. Mm -hmm. It's not about, you know, intelligence. It's about effort. It's what you do and how you use what you have. It's a, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be comparing yourself to others. You should be comparing yourself to yourself. Learning from others, mm -hmm. being inspired by others, but it's all about your personal best and, and how much you can challenge yourself. Got it. Um, in a previous interview, you said that uh, education is all about connections, personal connections, student-teacher connections, and connections to the community. How uh, Can you explain this philosophy and how it could apply to Region 9 in more detail? Give me the first one again. Um, education is... Uh, all about connections. All about connections, personal mm -hmm. connections. Okay. Personal connections meaning that you have to make a personal connection to your learning. Our job is to make it relevant to you, to, to um, whatever you're studying, we could we could create something around that that you could say, Oh yeah, that, that connects to my interest in sports or music or, or I know that you're involved in scouting. Yeah. So, you know, project planning, the Eagle Project is right. is you know is huge. So if I can find a way to, to put it in context for you, if you're working in math and I say, listen, you've got an Eagle project here, you've got a, you have a budget, limited budget, how are you going to set that up? And how are you going to prioritize? And um, it, it's making that your personal connection to your learning. Also, as, as educators, and, and I include anyone in the building who supports Joe Barlow High School, your, you know, your secretary, custodian, anyone, mm -hmm. um, we need to make take a personal interest in you. So, you know, when I see you, I want to know how your project is mm -hmm. because I know it's a big part of your life and, and, and it's a huge accomplishment when oh, it yeah. happens. But, you know, our, our best teachers and I think our most respected teachers, like students, are the ones who take the time to know that this one played soccer and this one, you know, is a, is a uh, um, you know, an accomplished violinist and this one's on the football team and we had a game last Friday Remember that that one has a birthday coming up because I overheard the person talking in the cafeteria. That's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the next part was student-teacher connections, which you right. sort of yeah. played off of there, and connecting with the community. For me, connecting with the community means that people need to know who I am. Um, at Convocation, where all the teachers and staff came together at the beginning of the mm -hmm. year this year, I shared I have five beliefs about education, you know, my leadership, five different beliefs. I shared it with going to every open house program and I'm taking a few minutes to welcome people back, tell them who I am, and I share my beliefs with them. That's my connection with them. Mm -hmm. They need to know and I explain to them, you know, what's driving my decisions, what's guiding my decisions, and it's these five beliefs that I have. Mm -hmm. So that's my connection to our community. I, I go to the library. I met with the librarian. I meet with the, the, the police department because mm -hmm. I know that we have to work in partnership. And the list goes on and on, writing boys and girls club. Um, now, s sort of to take a more different route, um, you're, fam you're obviously familiar with the Race to the Top program yes. of the Obama administration, mm -hmm. and you know that uh, Connecticut was placed in Category 4 for uh, 60 to $175 million of a uh, possibility of getting that money. Uh, by now, we should all know that Connecticut didn't make it past Round 1. Where, what can Barlow do to improve uh, this to, to improve their standards to raise the bar of uh, the race to the top for next year in order to make it further. To, to get money. There were two rounds of race to the top, right. and Connecticut was not awarded them even one. Correct. After the first round, the commissioner had feedback that says that we can, um, you know, might work with the um, um, state government, and they, they did pass some changes, um, pretty significant changes that, that um, he had hoped. student performance data in teacher evaluations. Okay, there were other states, states who were awarded this, that actually moved forward with that. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example of, of the approach Connecticut took to that topic mm -hmm. and the approach that other states took that, that I think they pre 
presented themselves as being a little more aggressive in moving forward with some of these changes. But you know, Connecticut is, is related to this, is looking at um, you know end of course um, tests for mm -hmm. kids and, and, and your your math and, and English and so forth um, that are really um, you know the, the state um, moves forward with these and implements these, and when they are implemented, it's going to have um, some implications for uh, for us and our work here. Mm -hmm. um, additional testing that we will have to look at. It, it, as far as raising standards, I think that Barlow standards are extremely high. Mm -hmm. I think our Board of Education makes sure that our standards mm -hmm. are extremely high. In fact, that was part of the discussion when, when the Board talked about whether or not we would participate in Race to the Top. Was um, you know with these requirements associated with, with you know participating in annual funding, will they actually you know hold us back in terms of, of you know the standards and the excellence that has been set for um, for Drew Barlow? So uh, you talked about how the um, how the So so for the next round of Race to the Top next if we get the change yes. next year, there's nothing that Thorolo could do to to raise their standards anymore according to the Board of Education. I, I don't think it's what districts are doing that will help the state at the money. I think it's it's statewide mm -hmm. what what needs to be done in, in Hartford, decisions made right. in Hartford of what they will ask districts to do that will um, persuade the federal government to, to consider awarding Connecticut that money. So I know one thing that we, that, uh, we talked about two years ago at Convocation was student evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, student, students evaluating teachers mm -hmm. uh, and having a form for that. So uh, do you encourage students to fill out that teacher evaluation form at the end of every semester so then the board can make an educated decision on where they want to go curriculum-wise or to, for department chairs to mm -hmm. uh, talk about where they want to go with the curriculum. Well, so you're talking about a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. One, to improve curriculum, you need to look at how students are performing. So if you're not successful with a certain course in a certain department, then, then we have to know why a certain group of kids um, was not successful. And how can we change our curriculum? How can we help students um, understand what our expectations are, or, or all of that? Um, so that's that's one way of looking at that. In terms of student feedback for teachers, I think that um, we do have teachers who who take the time to get feedback from the school. They want to know because they feel it helps them make them become better teachers. I ask that from from students. I make it as, as open and comfortable. And parents and um, and, um, and staff, but I think the rather than than, than respond to um, what kind of structure would I use for that? I think it's the question. It's the question of um, of um, as a teacher, what do I need to know from my students? What information from my students would help me be a better teacher next year or a better teacher? That's the essential question that, that you know, I would hope teachers ask, and how they get that information and how they use it is, is really all about them, a professional. If I want to grow as a teacher, and I know that it's a, an important component to how you're doing with your learning, then likewise. Mm -hmm. um, I actually found this quite interesting. Uh, I read it in the Reading Pilot that your desk up in central office mm -hmm. Um, has traveled with you over the course of your professional career. Um, this article stated that uh, this desk helps you keep connected to uh, with the people who have come before you in education. Uh, is there any memory uh, which this desk brings back to your mind? A lot, a lot. And I think I think there are there are, there are two things embedded in that question. I'm, I'm so glad you asked this question because you know it does mean a lot to me. Um, I have this this school. It, it's a teacher's desk. Mm -hmm. It's an oak teacher's desk. It's not very big, you know. I mean, a lot of a lot of administrators have very big desks, which, which I don't want. It, it's and it has a black top to it, so it's 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 very old. And um, you know, I, I, I wax it and take 
care of it. Like, I was, you know, um, but when I was principal, and that was my fourth administrative role, and I want to become a principal more than anything in my career at that point. I just, I couldn't wait. And I interviewed, you know, several different districts, and I was, I was in my early 30s, so I was very young to be considered to be a principal. And um, this one superintendent, you know, took the risk on me. And she said, you know, you're the person for this job. You know, I know that you don't have a lot of experience, you have no experience being a principal, but limited in being an administrator, but I think you're the right person for the job. She believed in me. And I walked into this beautiful old school that had, you know, a beautiful facade and columns and still hear from kids, and that was back in the 1980s to 1992, mid-80s to 1992, and I still hear from students, um, and I still hear from staff members, because we did a lot of good for the kids, and I realized then the impact of my decisions can be on a group of students and, and parents and staff. So that's the desk piece of it, yeah. but I also have um, an antique school bell collection, and they're about 25, and they're sizes, you know. The first one was given to me by my first principal uh, when I when I began teaching as very special because he's the one who came to me after a couple years of teaching and said, I think you have leadership talent. I think you would be a great leader and a great administrator. I steered you in the direction of administration. So I have that bell on my desk. It's been on my desk ever since. And that's um, and that honors an antique school bell that honors those teachers who had, you know, thirty kids in one room schoolhouse and of all different ages and made it work. Mm -hmm. So wow. um, yeah. Um so you gotta come up and see that. Yes, I, right. yes. I, I'm <laughs> okay. definitely definitely right. intrigued. Um I've heard that you're an accomplished pianist from Oh, that's just a bad rumor. No. <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> um so that's a rumor? Is no or no I'm the way I'm throwing that out to you. I'm just giving you a hard time. All right. Um, I, I am. Mm -hmm. I, when I was 11 years old, I, I, I started piano lessons. And uh, another thing that I really wanted to do. And uh, you know, I was pretty serious mm -hmm. through, through high school, spent a lot of time. Um, you know, we had talked before about work ethic and about effort. I had a, a German piano teacher who was brilliant. have that, that ability where, for convocation, I wanted to um, inspire the staff, and the end is where the piece will build from from each creation, and, um, you know, we, we had some uh, middle school and high school students, which is incredible to hear, Mr. Bowman, Mr. Ebert, mm -hmm. they both helped out, she conducted, and um, I coached piano, I sat down with the piano teacher, and I said, how great is that for me to be able to be a part of that? Another player in all of that, the flute and violin, you know, Mr. Bowman conducting the students, and I just I contributed to this larger um, piece, and uh, I've done that before, you know, yeah. at, at, at different choral concerts with the, the the choral director, you know, said, hey, would you want to accompany one of uh, one of the one of the pieces on the concert? Would you want to do second? And I said, you know, I'll go and I'll accompany the first the kids. I'll take my direction from their director, and they see me see me as a follower, that I'm not always someone who is leading, but I'm also working with the direction of the choral director. And it's just, it's great. I, I can connect with kids in a, in a very different way than, than probably any other administrator, right? Because I can, I can do that. Um, in terms of the budget, the, the budget I know for me is, as since I've heard several different numbers, and I know the, the students uh, who participate in student council are interested about uh, knowing the stance of the budget right now. Uh, the latest number that I found was a surplus of $234,000 for the 2009-2010 school year. 
I'm, that's, I got that number from the uh, Reading Pilot. I'm, I'm not sure if that number the is. Reading budget? Uh, yeah, the, yes, the Reading. There was a large surplus in the Reading budget. Mm -hmm. And um, part of the, that was last year, part, mm -hmm. part of the, the difficulty in, in the budget is that we have to budget for utilities uh, between General Tricity and Jefferson mm -hmm. County. So we don't know what kind of a winter we're going to have. If it's a very warm winter, we're going to need a lot of money to do that. And if it's a very cold winter, we may be right on budget or we, we may even be short. And we have to, to, to not spend in other accounts in order to come out balanced at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a director of, of finance and operations, Mr. Sullivan, mm -hmm. who is brilliant at what she does. responsibility of the town is to not have to go back and ask for additional funds and we want to do that and when there is money left over we look at, at some things um, we are called self-insured so in terms of health insurance mm -hmm. when we do pay um, on the um, when there are claims from our employees who need to have medical attention um, so we never know where that's going to go and, and we're supposed to have a reserve So when we have a surplus like that, we'll take some of that and put it into a reserve so that it's like insurance for us, mm -hmm. so that we, um, we don't run short if we have um, a higher number of claims and people need to have that medical attention. Um, it's, it's not an exact science. Just because yeah. we say, you know, we're going to put this much money into, into a budget in all these different accounts, um, things and needs do change over the course of the year. If you have a boiler here, we're watching the boiler. If you have a boiler go down, we have to replace it, right? Right. That means that we have to look at some other place to divert those funds to, to cover the, the, the safety and the, uh, the environment of the school. All right. Um, do you have any recommendations for student leaders in how we could improve student life at Kilgore Lake? Well, I know that you're working in school spirit, right? Yes. That is uh, something that uh, Student Council President Haley Murphy, yeah, Haley that, Murphy. that yeah. is her issue. Her, yeah. It's a good one for her. She's, she's very spirited, and she's very positive about, about what she does. Uh, and she was here last night at the board meeting. She reported that um, she thinks that there's some progress made, some good progress made with um, school spirit, mm -hmm. and um, that the year is off to a good start. I would say, um, and you'd expect superintendent to say um, about, about test scores, right? right? I think the first thing, you want people to, to learn to perform well, happy to be where they are. Mm -hmm. So um, high school is all about learning. It's all about preparing yourself for uh, career military or college. But it's also, you know, four very important and formative years of your life. And, you know, 20 years from now, I want every student here to say, I had a great experience at Broadway. I had people who cared about me, both, you know, students and adults. And they, and they really challenged me. They cared enough to challenge me. And sometimes I, I was upset about that because I didn't want to work harder, but they knew better. So that whole spirit and the memories you have of your high school experience are, are, are really important. Um, and in terms of, you know, the, the openness of communication uh, between students and the adults here, uh, I think is, is really important. And sometimes for students to take a step back and say, well, that's something that, that you know, we do want. We understand the reason that we can't move in that direction, and, and we're okay with that. That's, that's really maturing into a leader that, that, can, that can work cooperatively. Mm -hmm. And we need to do the same thing. You make a good point. Let's see if we can put that in place. Let's see if we can change this because you, know, you as students are controlling things. I know Mr. McLaurin is so interested he, he in, listening, in listening to kids mm -hmm. and, and, and really considering what they have. He, he, he's, a, he's always a, he's not a no principal. He's a yes, but we might need to alter it slightly. So that's or let me think about that, mm -hmm. right? Um, technology here at Joel Bola High School, we know, we know that this whole school is mapped out. We've got smart boards. Mm -hmm. Some teachers have iPads now. Right. What, where do you expect this school to be in? Of, couple of years down the road in terms of technology 
technological innovation and how and do you think that students should we should do you think that we should try to harness technology and maybe how do you how do you see technology fitting in with education? Okay. Um, it's true that as I walk through buildings, there's a lot of technology, smart boards, iPads. Um, but I think right now, the focus should be on um, how is that technology used in instruction that's going to help you be more successful in your degree. Technology, for technology's sake, isn't anything. Right. It's a toy. All right, and all of you have enough toys. Yes. Okay, you know, my, my, my son's 25. He's swapping out his phone like every other week. Okay, um, but for me, to move to, to move to the classroom, have a teacher say to me, I just learned how to unlock this learning for these students with my smart board. I pulled this up or I had them do something. That's when you know we're using it effectively. It, it's got to be there for, for an end, and the end is your success. Mm -hmm. You need to be more successful with your learning teacher has to say, I can't teach this lesson anymore without my technology. It's that integrated and that important. So I think our, our job, my job in, in supporting the administration is looking at professional development for teachers to, to um, help them um, use it in a more seamless way and use it um, um, with that end in mind that, that you know, this is going to help these students really understand. We talked about uh, walking into the library. Yeah. We talked about you know, having a visual image when you see a film on the revolution, you know, you read it first, which I hope happens, and then, <laughs> and then, and then, you know, you have your own images because that, that's that's a part of your comprehension is to create these images and you envision what you're, you're reading, and then it's confirmed by a visual. Mm -hmm. You know, so technology just kind of expands um, all of that. Uh, one story that I found interesting uh, was that a school in Florida uh, teaches what teachers are taking students cell phone addiction and making it and having it that a uh, teacher that you can text your answers to quizzes via cell phone did uh, would if that was possible for this for this school to do would you be in favor of texting? Quiz, texting quiz answers to, to, to integrate. <clears throat> well, actually, a couple years ago, I started to hear of some research that talked about um, embracing technology that students bring to school rather than trying to take it. Mm -hmm. Because um, three, four years ago, it was no cell phones, no iPods, you know, don't, no, no. don't bring any of that stuff in, 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 into the classroom. <clears throat> but but people, other administrators, my colleagues, you know, we started talking about um, how long can we actually prevent um, students from, from having the technology that is like the very center of what they're existing in. Mm -hmm. and, and the research was starting to support that there is a place for it. So I'm going to, I'm going to, my, my response to you is there's a place for it. It needs to be very carefully thought out because you have to think of uh, plagiarism and honesty right. and, of, of texting responses, but um, you know, there absolutely is a place for it. I know there's some schools that just have handheld. Mm -hmm. Everything's done with a handheld. And so uh, I, I know that schools are moving in that direction. I look to the leadership, the head of school here, to, to work with teachers, talk to students, um, read the research, and at some point come up with a recommendation of how our technology can be used. It's really, it's, it's funny you ask that question because during the strategic plan for, for Division I broadness, um, there are uh, board members here, Region 9 board members, who are asking the question, rather than just budget money for technology, you know, what is, the, what is our vision for technology in the classroom? What should the, the ideal classroom look like in terms of technology? So we have board members who are already asking those questions, and they're probably reading it as well. So you know, at some point we we, we will move into that into that uh, direction. Mm -hmm. uh, and lastly, is there anything else that I forgot that might be in the interest of the readers of the Mosaic to go over high school this week? Um, I I hope by now that the students here know how much I value my time with them, and and the students 
stops and calls it low and you know, you know, I ask how my day is going, I just didn't care asking how my day is going. You know, I see it as my job to, 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 to stay connected with you and ask me how things are going for you and what can I what can I do for you and um, you know, my big question is I have two. One is, you know, do you feel challenged? Are they challenged enough? And uh, most kids say yes. And the other one is about reading. Kids here are great. You know, what took me several months, if not you know, a couple of years, in my previous district, it took me a matter of weeks to develop up and connecting with students and feeling comfortable with them and, and having them reach out to me and talk to me and, um, and make all those connections. You know, the connections you know, for me to, to, with students, that's one direction, but the students back, the teachers and staff back to me, they have the support group. Mm -hmm. and, and that, that meant so much. I left after five years. I left a, a lot of, of very close relationships and, and friendships and you know connections with, with people in my previous district. And I worry about, especially in the new year, and, and would that happen here? And is it happening more quickly than I, I ever would have seen? So I I appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Great questions. You're welcome.